In this video, I'm going to go over something that kind of stumped me for a little while, but I've finally figured it out and now I can share it with you. What we're going to be doing is taking a texture directly from the Photoshop file and bringing it into Illustrator in a way that Illustrator can understand and therefore give it a transparent background, as well as that you actually change the color of the texture itself. Typically this is done by converting whatever your texture format is into a bitmap, but in doing that you lose a lot of the really fine details. Uh, which for some textures is perfectly fine if they're very harsh textures but for textures like this one that's a watercolor you really want to try to maintain all these super fine details because that's kind of what makes it special so I'm gonna go over how to do that and hopefully it'll help you uh, and it, also if you're looking for textures check out the description there's some cool textures to get there but let's just move right on to this uh, the first thing you're gonna want to do uh, is take your colored texture or if it's a black and white you can go ahead and skip this step this is really just if you're dealing with a, a complex colored texture like this you're gonna wanna go to image and then mode and oh, actually image and then adjustments and go to black and white and once again if you're starting with a black and white texture you can go ahead and skip this while we're doing this is just so you have a little bit more control over how your actual texture is gonna look I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time but just get your texture looking kind of the way you want to use it so we'll, that when you actually convert it into grayscale, which is the next step, it's kind of good to go and everything looks the way it should. So once you do this, once again, you're going to go back to up to image and then to mode and this time to grayscale. It's going to say, do you want to discard the color information? Go ahead and do that. Um, as something to note, you will lose any of the original colors of your textures doing this method because they have to be in grayscale to work. But within Illustrator, you can change the actual overall color of the texture itself. And I'll go into that once we jump into Illustrator. But now that we have our texture in grayscale mode, go over to your layers here and you're going to want to select the channels tab. Uh, once inside the channels tab, you'll see that the only available channel is gray since we're currently in grayscale. And we're going to want to select that. So how to select that is, is you either hold down control on a PC, or if you're on a Mac, hold down option, or I'm sorry, hold down command, and then click the gray, the gray layer here, and that'll make a, an active selection over all the white. So with this selection still active, we're going to want to go back over to layers, and then near the bottom here, just hit the new layer button. And next, with your uh, marquee tool selected, make sure that's selected before doing this, you're going to want to right click on a PC or if you're on a Mac with a one button mouse hit control and click and then hit select inverse and now make sure you're on your new layer here your new blank layer and hold or actually first you're going to want to hit D and what D is going to do is it, it automatically makes your fill a black which is what we want and then in the new layer here with this selection still active hold down alt and then hit backspace while alt is held down. Uh, you can also hold down alt and hit delete. It works the same. Um, if you're on a Mac, hold down option, backspace, or option, delete. And then you can go ahead and just click outside of the artboard here to deselect it. I'm just going to turn off the new layer we made here. You don't have to do that. Uh, but you can see the original here is on a background. And what we just did is we took out that background completely so it's transparent. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the original. And you're just going to want to save this. So I'm going to go to File and then Save As. Uh, I would recommend just making a new texture file so you don't overwrite your original one unless you really don't care about the original. But it's oftentimes really nice to have a backup just in case something goes wrong or you need to make adjustments later on. And once you have that file saved, you can jump on over to Illustrator. Um, and just as a quick note here, in the Layers palette, and if you don't have your layers palette open, just go to window and then layers kind of near the middle and select it. I made a new layer for the texture. I would recommend doing this. Um, it's just nice to have your texture in a totally separate layer so you can lock it or actually just toggle the visibility on and off if you're making edits to whatever's behind the texture later on. Uh, it'll just save you some time in the long run. It's a good way to work. But to get the texture in here, we're going to want to go up here to file and then down towards the middle there's place. Just select that and then make sure you navigate to whatever folder it is that you saved your texture in and select that Photoshop file. In this case, it's called texture two for me and just hit place. And as you can see, that places the texture in our artboard. You can tell it has a transparent background, but the texture is also black right now. 
Uh, and this is the part that had really stumped me for a long time because I would go over here to the fill and I would try to change the color of my texture to like a blue or something but no matter what I selected it would always stay black so I finally figured out how to get the actual color of the texture to change and to do that you need your swatches window and if you don't have a swatches window open right now just go over to window and then kinda near the bottom here there's swatches uh, just check that box and it should pop up for the next step within the swatches window uh, towards the top right here there's these three uh, lines with a down arrow just hit that and it'll bring up a menu and then near the bottom here there's open swatch library just go on over there and then kinda go over here to these various options and go into color books uh, you can use any of these different color books you want they should all work just fine personally I would recommend Pantone solid coated it's just kind of a good color book it's pretty standard for the design industry and there's a million different colors in there so I'm gonna select that and now you can see it brings up the the Pantone solid coated window and I'm just gonna kinda make it a little bit bigger here so we can see all the colors um, as you can tell there's a ton of colors to pick from so hopefully somewhere in there will be something that you can find useful and then just have your selection tool selected here and make sure your texture is selected but don't select any of your uh, background stuff that's why I have it on a separate layer I just lock the background but with that texture selected you can select any of these swatches from this this Pantone color book here and it will automatically change that color of your texture uh, so this way you can get a really cool Photoshop style texture on your illustrator design um, and if you're wondering why do you want to do this in illustrator and not just Photoshop oftentimes it's, it's really handy to keep your work in illustrator for editing it's for certain types of work it's just a, a better way or a more convenient way to kind of manage what you're doing and also if you're doing something like a t-shirt graphic and you want to separate the actual colors for print uh, illustrators generally consider just a much quicker easier way to do that uh, printers will really like working from within a vector uh, file like illustrator but something to note your texture will not be vector it's a photoshop file it's not a vector file so make sure whatever your art is behind or in front of the texture uh, try to get it to the right size before you bring your actual uh, texture in and that way you can kind of scale everything to a point that makes sense for whatever project you're working on if this video was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe and thank you so much for watching